I am yours. You are mine, of that be sure. You are locked in my heart, the little key is lost, and now you must stay there forever. Alex to Nicholas They first met at a family wedding in 1884, when Princess Alex of Hesse, later Empress Alexandra, was twelve and Nicholas was sixteen. Since they both sprang from the rarefied world of European royalty, they were closely related through multiple lines and saw each other quite regularly through the years. Alex made enough of an impression on Nicholas, that he scrawled in his diary he dreamed of marrying her one day. Princess Alex of Hesse was the granddaughter of Queen Victoria. By 1889, the Tsarevich Nicholas, heir to the Russian throne, was very taken with the lovely 17-year-old Alex when she came to St. Petersburg to visit her sister Ella. Shy and somewhat serious, Alex was interested in Nicholas as well. However, there were plenty of obstacles in the young couple's path to matrimony. For starters, the Tsar wanted his son to marry a French noblewoman and not the daughter of a minor German prince. Alex was also a devout Lutheran. Any bride of the future, Tsar would have to be willing to convert to the Russian Orthodox faith. Considering her commitment to her religion, it was widely assumed Alex would never agree to this, despite her love for Nicholas. So Alex returned to Germany, and Nicholas began a dalliance with a ballerina from the Imperial Ballet as his faither continued his plans to find a good political match for his son. But Nicholas couldn't get Alex out of his heed, and by 1892 was compelled to write in his diary, My dream is to one day marry Alex. I have loathed her for a long time, and still deeper and stronger since 1889, when she spent six weeks in St. Petersburg. For a long time, I resisted my feeling that my dream will come true. Europe's royalty gathered in Coburg, Germany, for the marriage of Alex's brother in the spring of 1894. Nicholas begged his father's permission to propose marriage to Alex while still in Coburg. The Tsar was reluctant, but his son swore he would wed no one but Alex. The Tsar's health was declining despite only being in his forties, so he ultimately relented. Nicholas wasted no time. He went to Alex's rooms and popped the question. The choice between her religion and her love was a torturous one for the young woman. She initially declined his proposal because of it, hoping he would rescind that requirement. Grandmama Queen Victoria, among others, talked Alex into converting to Russian Orthodoxy. By the next day, Alex decided to accept Nicholas's offer. The following morning, the ecstatic couple had coffee with a delighted Queen Victoria. The Queen was very fond of Alex, particularly for having the gumption to refuse Prince Albert. Victor's proposal, the eldest son of the Prince of Wales, despite the Queen herself pressuring her. At that point, she was already in love with Nicholas. Nothing would sway her to forsake him. In the end, Queen Victoria was very supportive of the match and enjoyed sharing in the couple's happiness. Nicholas and Alex were an oddity among royal engagements, a genuine love match. It may have reminded Victoria of her passion for her beloved Albert. Not long after their betrothal, the prospective groom's father, Tsar Alexander III's health, continued to decline. Alex was summoned to St. Petersburg, and the couple kept vigil at his bedside with Empress Marie and the rest of the imperial family for ten long days. Alexander III died on November 1, 1894, and 26-year-old Nicholas II became Tsar. The next morning, Alex was received into the Russian Orthodox Church. The new Tsar issued his first imperial decree, proclaiming his fiancée, the truly believing Grand Duchess Alexandra Feodorovna. Alex's first official royal entry into St. Petersburg was during Alexander III's funeral procession. The young couple was blindsided by the Tsar's sudden death, but they continued with plans to marry as soon as possible. Nikki and Alex's wedding was on November 26, 1894, a week after Alexander's funeral. The ceremony was a simple affair, out of respect for the recently departed Tsar. Alex wrote to her sister about the wedding, stating, 
Our wedding seemed to me a mere continuation of the funeral liturgy for the dead Tsar, with one difference, I wore a white dress instead of a black one. Nevertheless, the young couple was just happy to be together. As Nicholas wrote in his diary, Every hour that passes, I bless the Lord from the bottom of my soul for the happiness which he has granted me. My love and admiration for Alex continually grow. There are no words capable of describing the bliss it is to be living together. By spring, they were expecting their first child. Their lives would end in tragedy. In 1918, Nicholas and Alex were killed at the hands of the Bolsheviks with their entire family. But until their last breath, they remained as they began, completely devoted to one another.